Good morning, welcome everyone. Uh, we welcome you on behalf of ICE and Punjab University Alumni Association, the third lecture in this series. Uh, I invite uh, Dr. Nishima Wangu to please come and take over. Please come. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. I welcome uh, Professor Minakshi Munshi and I welcome all the audience members in this third Wise Women in Science lecture series. The esteemed speaker for today is uh, Dr. Minakshi Munshi from DBT. We had our first uh, two Wise lectures in which the first lecture was held offline before this pandemic started. It was by Professor Manjeet Kaur from Department of Physics who has worked extensively at CERN, uh, CERN. And then we had our second uh, WISE lecture by Dr. Mayuri Dutt, and she's a psychologist. And now uh, we are having our third lecture by Dr. Minakshi Munshi. So ma'am uh, is currently working as an advisor, scientist G with the Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. She did her master's from Kashmir University and carried out her PhD research work at Park, Mumbai. She has also done postgraduate in journalism and mass communication from Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. Subsequently joined University of Delhi as a postdoctoral fellow. Later, she worked as a research scientist at JNU Delhi, where she was working on plant signaling. Dr. Munshi, after working as a scientist, moved to a scientific administration at Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, and has been spearheading HRD societal development program, plant biotechnology programs. She also heads the communication division of the department. Besides, she has been a part of many policy framework documents and has been the driving force behind Ramalinga Swami Reentry Fellowship Program of the department. She has had many fellowships and awards to her credit and many publications and books. And today we are very lucky to have her to speak on this important topic of a sense of being a women scientist and the lessons learned. So, uh, without taking any further time, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Minakshi Munshi to please start with her lecture. Ma'am, please. Good morning. Uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to uh, uh, wish you a happy Navratri and uh, may this Devi helps us to come out of all this pandemic which the entire globe is going through. I would like to thank uh, Punjab University and uh, Dr. Nishima in particular, for inviting me for this lecture. Although this lecture was uh, scheduled in March uh, during the Women uh, Day, it was on 8th, I believe, but uh, we could not have it because of the pandemic and now we are meeting offline. But nonetheless, we are meeting whether it is offline or online. Thank you so much for inviting me for this uh, talk. So I thought I'll share uh, my journey uh, also with uh, you and the lessons learned throughout this journey with uh, you and, and tell you uh, something uh, brief about what are the various uh, women related programs we are supporting from the Department of Biotechnology. You all know that women uh, in education is, uh, if you look at the broad scenario, it is well said that if you educate a man, you educate an individual. But you, but if a woman you educate, the whole nation is educated. It's a, a well-known fact, but how much we trust in this, that's very important. Now, we all know that women constitute of 50% of the resources human resource and thus contribute to the major strength in the socio-economic development of the country. I mean, but uh, if you look at the broader perspective, uh, we hardly uh, visualize that women are a 50% of the human resource and they contribute significantly. Uh, if you look at the recent, you know, there was a, a survey, uh, all, in, all India uh, survey on higher education. Uh, looking at the total enrollment uh, data, it says that it has been estimated to be 
37.4 million with 19.2 million uh, as male uh, male members and 18.2 million as female and thus female constitutes 48.6% of the total enrollment against 47.6% in 1718 which is really not a bad looking at the gross enrollment ratio it's in higher education is 26.3% which is calculated for eight, uh, for the age group of 18 to 23 years of age and looking at this data, it shows us uh, GR for male population is 26.3% uh, and for females it's 26.4%. Uh, yeah. Uh, when we uh, look at uh, student enrollment at uh, in different courses at undergraduate level, the highest number of students, uh, which is amounting to 35.9% of the students, are enrolled in arts, humanities, social sciences, and the uh, and followed by science, which uh, accounts for 16.5%. Engineering and technology is 13.5%, and commerce is 14.1%. And when we move to the PhD level, the maximum number of students are enrolled in science stream, followed by engineering and technology. On the other hand, at postgraduate level, the maximum students are enrolled in social sciences and management courses. When we look at the gender distribution, uh, a ratio of male uh, students in higher uh, education is higher than female at almost every level, except at PM, MPhil postgraduate and certificate level. Students enrollment at undergrad level has 51% male and 49% is female. And if you look at the diploma courses, uh, it shows a skewed distribution of obviously because of the mindset of the people like we really uh, we usually do not want the female candidates to go for the diploma like courses and in uh, sub, uh, phd uh, uh, the male uh, percentage is 56.18 percent and female is 43.82 percent and if you look at integrated levels of courses 57 um, uh, percent is in a male are and 42 percent is uh, female PhD diploma student enrollment shows 54.09% for male students and 45.915 for female students. If we look at the enrollment and the gender ratio in science, at BSc level, uh, there is a 46.80 lakh student intake, which uh, includes 51.7% of females and 48.3% of uh, male. And MSc students, uh, MSc level is 6.79 lakh students are registered and 62.72% are females and 37.2% are males. And when you uh, look at the PhD uh, level, there's no not much actual data could be seen, but the uh, women percentage is 25% of the women are, the, are uh, taking up a uh, PhD. Uh, it has been noticed uh, looking at this data that as we go higher in the ladder at uh, PhD level, the, the women per se, there's a decrease in the uh, women participation as we go higher in the ladder. And according to the re most recent uh, UNESCO science report, it says women account for only 28% of the researchers across the world. And if you look at the current scenario in India, women <coughs> make up only 14% of the 2.8 lakh scientists, engineers and technologists employed in R&D institutions. So look at, uh, it itself shows there's a wide gap uh, compared to what uh, intake is of male uh, fellow uh, scientists and uh, compared to the women. If you look at this, <coughs> Women, uh, women's education is looking at from the primary level to the top. It's a leaky pipeline at every step, be it at the primary uh, school level, uh, be it at the secondary uh, or uh, college level, um, then MPhil, uh, uh, doctorate and postdoc and job, and of course, 
being an eminent scientist you have it is at the educational uh, level as well as at the career level we find this uh, leaky pipe so what are the reasons uh, for this decline at every step what i feel there's a social conditioning it's very important one of the important uh, components of the social fabric uh, you know uh, when i was a kid even my mother would say uh, like women has to do garbar and darbar but before that when i uh, as kid we would, uh, i had read somewhere in the book the women is for the hearth and men is for the farm so we grew up in those kind of uh, you know thought process and that's how uh, we see uh, the decline of women at each step and there are various reasons my mother would never uh, like uh, say that no you only do studies for her it was a, you are a girl child and you have to go to somebody else's home and so for you it is garbar and darbar so i grew up in that kind of sign so that the social conditioning is very important here so balancing of dual role after marriage which is a very important component of the social fabric we are living in time commitment and work pressure lack of suitable jobs after phd then we have a career breaks in education and employment of course due to various reasons change in the job location if you get married to in a different uh, city then it is the it is the women who is expected to leave the job and not the men so gender biasness is always there it could be conscious or unconscious but it exists lack of scientific role models at early stage this has a lot of impact on a uh, young uh, budding women uh, child if she comes across a, a person who who's like a role model to her it will change the entire career uh, trajectory of that uh, per child so how to increase the women participation is a matter of concern for all of us at different levels it needs an mentoring it needs a promotion of work life balance so for women uh, due to other family commitments it's very important we need flexi timings in fact uh, these days uh, due to pandemic we we could devise various ways and means of doing work in fact uh, all of us have become more productive uh, because of working from home and then because due to flexi timing we attend to all our uh, uh, assigned work very efficiently because of the flexi time so i think we need to think about it in a very broader perspective can we uh, give flexi timing to our uh, women scientists women uh, students or, or the faculty in whatever way we could uh, do it so uh, then we need to provide as i mentioned we need to provide suitable leadership programs from time to time to engage these young uh, uh, scientists or young uh, women uh, yeah, with these kind of leadership programs so that you know, they add a lot of value and the change the perspective of uh, of the thought process we need to create simultaneously uh, at regular intervals new opportunities increase the opportunities and very it's very important we need to recognize uh, their contribution by giving them awards and rewards which is very important to keep you motivating and do good science, uh, science. so uh, i thought uh, i'll uh, tell you about what are the various initiatives uh, of the department of biotechnology but uh, before that i would like to share with you what are the various schemes of uh, dbt so uh, i thought i will like to share uh, the organizational structure of the ministry of science and technology the uh, ministry of science technology has uh, three broad uh, departments under uh, its uh, umbrella department of science and technology the focus here is on all basic sciences and the department of biotechnology we focus on biotechnology and uh, biology modern biology and product product oriented research and then we also have department of scientific and industrial research uh, which includes uh, council of 
industrial uh, and scientific research where the focus is on technology and industrial development what are the roles and responsibilities of the department of biotechnology you will be surprised to know that dbt uh, in india is the only country where we have a full fledged separate department of biotechnology but otherwise uh, in other countries they have uh, they have nothing like separate department of biotechnology they uh, have uh, uh, it as a part of the other uh, existing departments no department of biotechnology started as a board uh, in 1982 and in 1986 it became a full fledged department we have come a long way in last 3 uh, decades and our focus is on the as a central coordinating and policy making organization in biotechnology we fund research and development in biotechnology we also have a responsibility of developing a critical mass of human resource Uh, we are also involved in establishment of the state of the art infrastructure facilities establishment of centers of excellence across the country we provide a framework and guidelines for regulatory policies uh, current year's budget has been uh, it's 19 uh, to 2786 crores we provide extra money grants to universities research institutions and academia across the country provide r&d support to ngos and industries we also have uh, 16 core autonomous institutions where the funding goes from the department of biotechnology so this just gives you an overall uh, idea about what the uh, department of biotechnology supports we support biotechnology research across uh, the areas like agriculture animal biotechnology and we have international collaboration with many uh, countries we support translation and innovation startups So we have major program on science outreach there is a specific program and northeastern initiatives the 10% of our budget is earmarked for the northeastern uh, states we do support major program on environmental biotechnology healthcare food and nutrition uh, hrd is a one of the major important components so i thought i'll just share one slide on what is the process of supporting the r&d so you should have a basic uh, knowledge uh, about how if you you intend to sub, uh, submit a r&d proposal to department of biotechnology so what is the process it goes from the submission of the project till you get a sanction order that is the release of the grant so uh, you are expected to submit a proposal online we do not accept offline proposals there is a e promise electronic uh, project registry uh, that's called e promise uh, you have to submit first you have to register there it, it generates a password and id and then you can submit your proposal online once the proposal is submitted online then it goes to the isc it's called internal screening committee where it is uh, reviewed uh, internally by the program officers and then it goes for peer review and external review to the experts concerned in the area of where with you have support, uh, submitted the proposal after that it goes to uh, tech which is called technical evaluation committee they do the technical due diligence and if the cost of the project is more than 40 lakhs then it goes to the another committee that's called stag which is called uh, which is scientific and technical advisory group committee and after the, if they recommend the project and then it goes uh, to the uh, so uh, internal finance and then finally uh, the project is supported and if the cost of the project is more than 5 crores it goes to another committee that's called apex board and uh, which reviews uh, these uh, high end projects and based on the recommendations of this board there can be a direct uh, recommendation or they may suggest a site visit or visit which is done and after due diligence financial proposal uh, development uh, and uh, you get the sanction order that's called administrative order and the money is released so i thought i'll just share with you the brief uh, cycle uh, uh, if you intend to submit a project any time and another thing i would like to share that uh, department of biotechnology accepts proposals round the year we we have two cycles in a year so that uh, 
uh, if you uh, submit in the uh, January, uh, it gets cleared by July, and if it's submitted after that, it gets cleared in the next cycle. So, since I was being, uh, told to restrict on the women uh, initiative, so I thought I'll just share with you what are the various initiatives of the Department of Biotechnology in women-related uh, programs. So, department has a major program as a bio care that is uh, exclusively for the women scientists, although uh, women scientists are eligible to apply for all existing programs of the Department of Biotechnology, but women in this bio care program is exclusively for the women scientists. We also have established a Golden Jubilee mm -hmm. Biotech Park for women uh, entrepreneurs, and we oh, have an award also oh, specific oh, for oh, women scientists. So, can any can people mute their uh, mics? I request the audience to please switch off their microphones. Please do not switch on your microphones during the presentation. Property conceal कर रही है. बाकियों के NOCs क्यों नहीं है? Please press the microphones. The presentation is going on. Okay. I'm doing it, uh, but uh, Sony, please mute. I am muting on and holding me in the property. Agar killa se leke aap Should I continue? Property, yeah. Nishima, Nishima, should I continue? Yes, ma'am, please continue. Please continue. Okay. Uh, when we talk about the epidemic centric programs, as I was telling you, we have a major uh, initiative that's a biocare scheme, where uh, this aim of the scheme is to uh, promote women scientists and have their active participation. Because we all know that women have uh, other responsibilities, also they have a responsibilities of rearing their families, and due to this, there is a career break. And we want to bring those women uh, into the mainstream of the science where uh, there is a career break. So this is uh, for both women uh, who are employed as well as employed. But the, uh, the major criteria is they, it should be their first grant. So this operates under two categories. Scheme one is research grant opportunity and the other is a early career fellowship. Now, when we talk about the biocare as a research grant opportunity, it is for both employed or unemployed women uh, scientists up to the age of 55 years for whom it is a first grant. Uh, the basic qualification, as you know, it, it's MD, MTech, PhD, or equivalent degree in any branch of the life sciences. Uh, there are three slabs of stipend for the fellowship, which depends on the post PhD experience. For employed scientists, they receive uh, rupees 10,000 in addition to the regular salary as an incentive. And for unemployed women scientists, those there is a provision of fellowship uh, at uh, grade 1 is 50,000, uh, grade 2 is 55, and grade 3 is 60,000. But these all these grades are under revision, and very soon we are, you will see that there is a revision in these fellowship programs. And there is a research grant of uh, 60 lakhs for a period of 3 years. Uh, when we talk about the early career fellowship, uh, it is for the candidates having less than two years of experience and uh, they will be supported under early career scientist uh, fellowship. If a, a candidate is selected, uh, you can avail this uh, fellowship. And But uh, the criteria here is if you are availing any other fellowship, you will have to resign from this fellowship. You cannot have both of them together. And the budget here is the R&D budget is restricted to 40 lakhs for a period of three years. So this uh, BPT uh, supported this Golden Jubilee uh, Biotech Park for Women in it's in Chennai. This was in uh, this was established in uh, 2000, basically to provide opportunities for professionally qualified uh, women and to promote self-employment career by organizing environment friendly biotechnological enterprises and promote commercial projects based on bioresources available within the state for food, agriculture, medical, or environmental biotechnology, etc. Now, uh, of course, uh, now we know that uh, many women uh, scientists are doing excellent work and they need to be rewarded in order to motivate them. In fact, uh, you might have uh, seen this year 
we have got uh, two women scientists were awarded the Bhatnagar Award, and even uh, for the Nobel Prize also. This time uh, we have three, four women who have been uh, awarded in chemistry, uh, one in physics, one even in the no, uh, literature, women scientists have been awarded. So DBT also has uh, taken us a small steps towards this and uh, we have established National Women Biotechnologist Award. It's in both senior category as well as junior category. When we talk about senior category, it's uh, uh, for the lifetime contribution in science. Each award received, a body receives a cash prize of 5 lakh rupees, a citation and a gold-plated medal. And in the junior category, there are two uh, awards uh, given away every year for the uh, scientists, women scientists, below the age of 45 years of age. And she gets a award money of 1 lakh as a cash prize, a citation and a gold-plated medal and a research grant of 5 lakhs per year for 5 years. And this money she can utilize for doing uh, her research, traveling nationally, internationally, whatever she wants uh, to do in order to support her research. And I was also being asked to share my uh, scientific trajectory. It's not that great, but I thought still I should uh, share as I have been asked to. So I feel a journey of 1,000 miles, as you all know, it begins with a single step. So same way, I also took a first step. So my, my first brush with science was because na uh, nature of fascinated me. I come from a very small uh, uh, place, Kashmir. So you'll be surprised to know that when I heard what is PhD, I didn't know what PhD is. So it, there was an incident. I was going in a bus as a small uh, school going kid and I was standing. There was one uh, lady who saw a kid standing and said, come, you can share the seat with me. So out of curiosity, she asked me, where are you coming from? And I said, I'm coming from my picnic. And uh, then she asked me, what are you doing? I said, I'm a student of grade six or grade seven. So uh, out of curiosity, I too asked her, what are you doing, ma'am? She said, I am doing PhD. So I, 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 it was Greek to me at that time. I said, uh, what is PhD? What does it mean? So for that lady, so she thought the best way how to define a PhD. So she told me, uh, you write a book. I couldn't understand for a little while. I said, I go to the market. I go and uh, write a book so i buy it from a bookseller uh, in the next door so believe me uh, what drove me to do phd is this that you can write a book. i said in my, i started imagining i buy a book always from the market and now can i write a book so okay it was here uh, to be honest the first alphabet of science was uh, learned in the school then eventually I moved to the college. It was this college where seeds of pursuing science as a career were sown uh, due to, of course, our revered teachers. And uh, then after doing my graduation, I moved to do my uh, master's. I was always fascinated by chemistry, but as the, uh, you know, you, uh, it is said that destiny has something else in store for you. I was offered a master's uh, program in uh, botany instead of chemistry. So I had no option then to take botany as a subject. And then eventually after doing the post-graduation, doing a PhD became a career option to follow. And uh, I was lucky to have a mentor who was a professor, uh, was a scientist from BARC, Professor Late Jagdish Shankar. And it was he who took me to BARC to do my PhD work. I was fortunate to go to such a big place from a small town, Kashmir to Bombay, all the way BARC, which, which is a very which is a reputed institute for R&D. And it was here I could uh, start doing my PhD work and understood what research means. 
And, you know, then it's well said that if one has to follow the dreams, there is only difference between dreams and aims. Dream requires effortless sleep and aim requires sleepless efforts. So it is this sleepless effort which we need to do to move forward and do something significant. And after doing my uh, PhD, the next step was the job. So started looking for the job and uh, I happened to work in a company for a few months, but uh, I realized, oh, that is not my take. I was working as a product development officer in a pesticide company. But somehow down the line, I realized this is not what I wanted to do. And uh, in the meantime, I got an offer of a permanent job as a, you know, you all know the gazetted officer job, how important it would have been uh, two two decades back. And I got a permanent job in my own hometown. And that time, my first reaction was, I don't want to do this job. And everybody in my family was very upset. She's got a permanent gazetted officer's job and she doesn't want to do this. Instead, she's opting for a research associate position, which is uh, all through a temporary position. But, you know, uh, as a women scientist, again, as a woman, uh, you go against the parental pressure and the family pressure. I went back. I joined that job for uh, three months and still, but... My mind was always in the research because I wanted to do something in the research as career. As uh, I did that for three months, I came back to my lab in Delhi University where I was working as a research associate. And I talked to my professor. I said, sir, I don't want to do that job. I, I come back to the research. He was very happy and I was fortunate enough. He said, okay, Minakshi, don't worry. Why don't you join? I have another position to offer you. And then and there, I decided I never went back to that, you know, to my teaching, which I was doing in my hometown. I resigned that from that job the very day and joined the Delhi University as a research associate where I was working on poly, polymerase uh, from spinach. And then after a couple of years of a postdoc in Delhi University, I moved as a research scientist uh, to, Institute of, uh, to a school of life science in JNU where I was working with the, on plant, plant signaling. So the favorite part of being in science is especially, at least for me, I would say it helps you to think independently. Uh, there is an opportunity to publish. And uh, during this, these are some few of the, my publications. But of course, doing research is not without issues and problems. There is a flip side to this also. So many times repeated failures of experiments. And this happened with me also while we were working on nitrate redu- nitrite reductase. Nitrate reductase. And, uh, you know, then when you have repeated failures, you lose confidence. You feel uh, something is wrong with you. You're not able to do it. So what is the way out? It happened with me. I discussed once with my professor, he said, uh, why don't you talk to this professor or that professor and see, and believe me, uh, this helped. So what is the way out? We need to go out and talk to people, and the outcome is really, we find many like us. Oh, then I realized when I talked to this professor, I said, I do this experiment till one stage, I get the activity, and when I pass it through the column, I don't get any activity. And I have repeated this experiment many a times. So when I talked to this professor, he said, oh, Minakshi, I have the same problem. And believe me, that boosted my confidence. And, you know, I gained that confidence, which I had completely lost. I said, I'm not capable of doing research. So I ultimately, I could find my way out. And uh, now, then there came a next phase in my life. I was doing research, doing good. But, you know, you say, there is a saying, Man proposes, God disposes. That too I happened with me. I was at a crossroad of my life where I was thinking what to do because of my personal health issues. I had to give up my research, but then what was uh, what to do? So I thought tomorrow I'll be assessed and I'll have, have nothing to show. So I should have a plan B in place. Then I opted 
for journalism and mass communication, I thought if I am out of this research, then I can bank upon my other op my job opportunity. So doing this, uh, journalism did help me. So I thought, let me use this journalistic skills if I have any. So I started working on a book called Biotechnology Applications and Careers. And this book did well. So what I want to say is we need to follow our dreams and keep our soul alive. So keep doing something or the other which keeps us moving. As I said, uh, it's very important that we have role models in our life, which, which gives a big flip to our career. As a, as a student, young student, there was one lady, uh, Mrs. Sharma, who was my friend's mother. She had been a big uh, support uh, in the initial days, a, a very friendly. Uh, she was more friendly to me than my, even my mother. So then I, uh, when I told you I left my uh, job uh, from uh, research associate and went to jo do the permanent job, it was uh, this uh, gentleman, Professor. Professor Sachar, who told me, Minakshi, don't worry. If you want to leave that job, you can come and join. And then when I joined uh, JNU as a research scientist, it was Professor uh, Sapori's lab. He has been a big mentor in big way. And subsequently, I moved to the Department of Biotechnology where Dr. Manju Sharma, who was, a, uh, who was a, uh, then secretary of the Department of Biotechnology, she had been a big mentor to me. So uh, we need mentors at different levels. Mentor, uh, mentoring can start right from the home. At home, our parents, our elders can become mentors to us. They can uh, support us in whatever way. They can advise us. They can motivate us. They can coach us towards the goal which we have with us. And uh, guiding uh, can be in any form. Uh, even young people, today's uh, generation can also help us in uh, as a uh, can be the mentors for us so when you have free time never give up on your hobbies it's very important keep doing something or the other which will lift you up uh, i did the same thing uh, when in between uh, my research was as i mentioned earlier my research experiments were not going great so i was feeling very upset what to do so I thought, let me do something. So I started writing uh, research articles and popular articles in uh, in national dailies, which keep kept me working. And you know, I thought, at least I can do something uh, positive. As I did uh, mention to you that uh, because of my personal health reasons, I had to move from a bench job, from a wet lab. Uh, job to the desk job. So what was the uh, opportunity? I uh, happened to apply to the Department of Biotechnology and uh, got a job there as a scientific officer. And so what we do here as a scientific manager, we have, if you look at this, this is exactly what we do looking look at this picture. It's very well apt for people who are working as scientific managers. We do too many things. We, we do multitasking. Uh, in, in the morning, I do something. In the afternoon, I have something else to do. And by the time uh, the day ends, I really don't know what all I have done during the daytime. So, but uh, that's what a scientific manager is expected to do. And I thought, you know, if I'm not able to do science, uh, because of some reasons. So let me be an enabler. At least I can help other fellow scientists to do good science. So at Department of Biotechnology, I have been responsible uh, for uh, human resource development, where my focus of work has been Ramlinga Swami Reentry Fellowship Program, BioCare, as I did mention. Uh, we support various fellowships and awards at different le levels. Uh, master's programs, we have JRF, SRF, we have Star College programs. And in plant biotechnology, I had been uh, supporting uh, biodiversity characterization programs. We had a major uh, solid, uh, plant genome initiative on rice and tomato, apple and saffron network program. 
societal development programs we are we support research on rural development uh, which are and the women uh, especially uh, scst and women centric programs we support so well you know it's uh, a comfort zone is always beautiful place but uh, as uh, it's well said that nothing ever grows there which is a fact we need to come out of the comfort zone and do something really the life is uh, makes it uh, so we need to explore and reach out to new opportunities opportunities are like sunshines if you wait too long you may miss them so just grab the opportunity where, where, whenever and wherever it happens uh it happened with me you know uh, i would uh, share with you this full how this full bright fellowship happened to me one of the person he called me and i wanted to know uh i told can we uh, apply for full bright fellowship uh, they were uh, they were from the university so i said uh, i don't know let us call the full bright office and find out if uh, people from uh, ministries can apply so i picked up a phone and called some gentleman picked up the phone and i said uh people like me who are a science manager am i eligible to apply for this full bright fellowship and to my surprise the answer was yes and in fact uh, the uh, last date for the uh, fellowship program has been uh, extended so please do apply so after this when i heard from this uh, person so i said let me give a try because i always wanted to do a postdoc overseas so i applied i wrote a project proposal and then submitted it and to my surprise i was selected for this fulbright fellowship uh, program in 2010 11 and then i had an op i had an opportunity to work at uh, uc davis california uh, on biofuels uh, and the uh, to understand the su supply chain so the real so the real role of a women scientist is really multitasking you are always you know your life is uh, depends on the tick uh, of the clock in the ticking clock uh, in one hand i mean this uh, picture depicts a real uh, role of a women uh, being a multitasking and we have to multitask at every level and we should be ready for this and i'm sure women are capable of being a multitasking but at the same time it's very important for uh, women or for that matter any human being to have a work life balance otherwise you know uh, the life just goes heavy we need to have a work life balance with the family with the career the health is equally important the friends we need to have a work life balance which is very important and you know uh, the family is important at the same time the women the friends the, the families they are they give us a good support and strength in good and bad times so we need to nurture these relationships and i define our priorities at times you know you feel that in the whole rut you are lost which is why it is very important for us to relax and rejuvenate and spend some time with your own self to discover yourself which is very important many times what i have seen in my career trajectory you feel uh, alone you feel low but then uh, we don't have to get stressed because we need, there's a lot to learn from the nature nature also has been existing and teaches us it teaches to me i thought it teaches that obstacles are a part of life unexpected obstacles can be beautiful and even delicious they do teach us in some way or the other so let us accept that obstacles are a part of life and and we need to deal with them we always uh, want a big growth but i feel even small growth is still a growth a little progress we make every day makes a big difference in life so let's accept that do it but keep growing the bottom line is we need to keep growing and move on so we should look out for the opportunities 
it's a very way uh, uh, i was very fascinated by uh, this reach out for the light when you can find it you uh, i don't know many of you how many of you are uh, the plant uh, from the plant background you, you might have seen uh, uh, read about phototropism where a plant even if you keep them in the dark if there is a small ray uh, small hole in in that room these plants tend to grow towards that because they see that opportunity that light coming from there and then they they grow they move out, they want to reach out to that light so my point here is to say that look for the opportunities they will come to you you, uh, you have to just look for it and keep trying and uh, you know many times we say oh i cannot do this is such a huge task we don't have to do things alone we need to uh, work together as a team this, because there is strength of a team is each individual member and the strength of each member is the team so let's work together to achieve a defined goal at the same time it's important that we have a goal and we need to keep a constant eye on the goals we cannot deviate from our goals as it is said that impossible i am possible impossible means i am possible well success is not final failure is not a fatal it is the courage to continue that counts which is very true and i believe strongly in this and this is what kept me going in my personal life you know many a times every experience in life teaches us something or the other sometimes things may not go the way we have expected them to and sometimes they do but if it works uh, in the way we thought it's okay but uh, in the long run okay. what you see is every experience okay. teaches us something or the other and both experience are really worth it this is what i feel so the bottom line is that we need to believe in your own self and that is where the that uh, secret to the success is believe in your own self don't worry about the darkness that is when the stars shine bright this is what i believe in strongly you know meaning of success is very relative to someone it is buying a big car getting a good job traveling abroad and to someone it is helping someone across the road and uh, during so it's very relative what a success means so, to every one of us and to be successful one needs to work hard and one has to pay a price you know it's well said get, getting dirty is a part of it yes if we want to uh, succeed in life we need to work hard and to work hard we need to come out of the comfort zone and then we have to slog it out nothing comes without slogging so to say that getting dirty is a part of it so nothing is impossible as i said earlier also we can have anything if we are willing to work for it there are no free lunches we need to work for everything so we don't let any unsuccessful woman convince us otherwise work hard believe in your own self and move on and if you want to be successful you must respect one rule it's never lie to yourself because we all are answerable to our own selves than to anyone else so there's a need to commit to constant and never ending improvements in life and the leader in you will be come out if your actions create a legacy that inspires others to dream more learn more do more and become more then you are an excellent leader you know uh, we always the higher you go you know the more important it is to be humble and it always pays so two achievements come to those who stay humble despite success no matter what where you are it's always good to be humble and listen to people at times you may not be able to help them 
but at least you can listen to them and make them Im feel important. So at the end, I would one, say one thing, stay strong, give up giving up. That's very important in our lives. We should not give up. So the bottom line is that your life is a gift of God. Whatever the conditions are there, we must go on. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for your inspirational lecture. And you must have noticed that uh, we have had a huge number of participants, as I was expecting and telling you. Thank you, ma'am. You truly are an uh, inspiration to all of us. Despite the challenges you had in your life, you rose to the highest position in your department. And uh, not only that, you continuously keep on inspiring uh, young aspirants as well. I remember when you came to our university, Punjab University in 2015, you must be remembering. Yes. I remember the time how you encouraged all of us to do good in our research and, as, and be good human beings as you also represented in your slides also. Thank you so much, ma'am. And by the way, for all those who were not clear about what ma'am meant by saying uh, Garbar and Darbar, <laughs> because she used a Kashmiri terminology, so I would make it clear. She wanted to convey that uh, in older times, like when she was young, so uh, women were uh, uh, told to be in their houses only. So that is Garbar and no, Darbar. I, no, no, no. I, I, I said, uh, if you look at it, there was a, there's a saying, Women is for hearth and men is for the farm. What it farm. means, women has to work in indoors and man has to go and earn the bread. Which I'm is, uh, and in, in Garbar and Darbar, it's, a, it's the same thing. Darbar means office, office. and Garbar means house, ho household work. Yeah, so that's actually a Kashmiri terminology. So I thought yes. I would be clear to yeah. do this. <laughs> yeah. okay. So yeah. now we can have a few questions addressed to the speaker. For that, I would request uh, whoever wants to ask a question, please raise your hand. When you raise your hand, I will ask you to speak. So please raise your hand using the raise hand option. You can hold it. Yes, you can raise your hand. The option is near where you have uh, this chat and uh, unmute and mute your microphone. You have an option of raising your hands. So yeah, I can see Thomas and then he's so, raising his hand. Shimonam, can you read the chat also? Yeah, yeah, you can write in the chat box also. You can write your question in the chat box also. We can read it out to the speaker and she can answer your question. You can write it out in the chat box as well. And Sonia, in, if in case anyone wants to ask the question, you can unmute that speaker also, if someone raises their hand. No, no. Okay, thank you, Sonia. Mm. So please write your question in the chat box. Mm. Okay, ma'am, by the time... Hello, uh, ma'am, by the time uh, the audience writes the question, can I ask you a question? Sure, sure. Okay, ma'am. So uh, how do you feel like working in DBT or in any other government organization? Do you feel that there would have been a difference had you been not a female? Uh, do you feel the difference like being a, a, a female authority? Do you see the difference or not? No, uh, thankfully, in the Department of Biotechnology, there's nothing like this. In fact, you'll be surprised to see we have we are more women scientists in DBT. Yes, ma'am, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing, nothing like that. Okay, okay ma'am. Because everybody is treated equally. Okay, because it's very heartening to see the uh, news about the Nobel Prizes also this year. Yes, this so, year, yes. Just rock but still, it. there is a glass ceiling, uh, Nishima. There is a glass ceiling. Yes, there is, ma'am. There is. Nishima, ma'am, there is a question in the chat. Okay, fine. So, uh, Sony, can you please read out the question? Thank yes. you. Uh, it is from V. Divya Lakshmi to everyone. She says, uh, "It is very inspiring, ma'am. Uh, from uh, your life, 
to success uh, the question was from sorry uh, Jag jagdeep kaur is there any opportunity for women retired faculty for further research that is the question from professor okay. no, no. yeah yeah i will uh, dr uh, jagdish jagdish you said jagdeep kaur. Yes, jagdeep kaur. Jagdeep. so we have a we have a biotechnology uh, professorship scheme uh, for scientists who are uh, active uh, doing uh, excellent research after uh, super innovation yes that's called a Dif distinguished research professorship award okay yeah and if and people are writing that it's very inspiring ma'am for sharing the secret of life to success they are thanking so many thank thanking you so much people are there for you i must th thank punjab university for giving me this opportunity to share ma'am there's another question from uh, uh, do you have any program for attracting a woman who has done phd in usa well uh, there is a scheme uh, ramlinga swami reentry fellowship if somebody from overseas indian is in indian national wants to uh, relocate uh, himself or herself there is a scheme called ramlinga swami fellowship where you should have a phd with a 3 years of minimum postdoc fellow uh, experience and in fact the scheme is out and the last date as of now is 31st october please do apply in case you feel interested and the details are on the dbt website thank you ma'am there's also this national bioscientist award for women oh, yeah. yes so its last date was i think 30th september only yeah yes okay okay so ma'am one of actually my research scholar is saying thank you ma'am for informative and inspirational talk kindly share any specific opportunity or programs for young girl students in graduation who can be guided or supported if they are interested in research but undergraduate you know nishima they have to do their post graduation and after that only they can apply uh, i mean yeah so project As such there is no specific scheme for undergrad students uh, but uh, they have to apply for the they, have, they can write the uh, entrance exam and uh, qualify for the jrf uh, exam and then uh, join phd program Yes. Otherwise, ma'am, there's an Inspire Fellow program yes. also. Yeah, yeah, that's a DST. That's a DST yes. program. Yes. We, uh, I was asked to. Uh, it's a women related. I didn't talk about yes. any of the programs. That's Maybe okay. Some other time, surely. Yeah, yeah. I just told because I've myself been an Inspire faculty, so I was just oh, okay. trying to inspire for the Inspire. <laughs> so there are some questions. Uh, in the chat box uh... yes so uh, professor ashna butnagar uh, is yeah. saying after phd opportunities for young scientists are very few and many of them are left wondering what to do That's see uh, after after phd you have a dbt has a dbt ra you can uh, take up uh, in fact the uh, the fresh ad is just out we support this program uh, and this is executed by indian institute of science bangalore professor arun kumar is in charge for this please do apply for this dbt ra ship and uh, then uh, even in db in uh, dst there is npdf you can apply for npdf also and dst uh, inspire faculty you can apply and uh, you can always try uh, for a postdoc overseas go out learn something and come back you can do that depends on your interest like what we have heard from you also your journey that has also from kashmir to mumbai to us and now to delhi so it's been really inspiring so yeah, it's very important uh, to uh, come out of the comfort zone to go out learn meet different kind of people it right. is important otherwise you know you don't you don't understand what is happening outside the world so you feel uh, you know everything but which okay. is not a fact true true go out explore the world and then uh, take a call right. 
And Ma'am, Professor Bhatnagar also has a concern that she's saying um, the number of PhD holders are far more than these opportunities. Absolutely, I am. See, now the question is, uh, why after PhD you can try to uh, uh, and divorce yourself? You can go, uh, you can become an entrepreneur, you can join an industry, you can join an NGO, you can join as a researcher. So uh, why to go in a single direction? Or you can become a teacher, you can, uh, I mean, research faculty, you can teach also. You can join NGO. It all depends. See, you now there are many alternate careers. You can become a grants manager. It depends on your interest. And, you know, we should be open uh, to change. Accept the change because normally we resist change. They, no, we ha I have to become a faculty only. I have to become a teacher only. I have to become a professor only. Let's, let's come out of this uh, thing and... I look at myself, I mean, I when I started, I the only thing that bitten me was a research bug. I it was I I left a permanent job and in and in a small place like Kashmir, it was I had a lot of resistance, but because I want to do research. But destiny had something else in store. I had to leave, I had to accept it. So the question is acceptance and move on. At the end of the day, we need to do something for the society, something for ourselves, something for the community. It really doesn't matter if I am contributing as a teacher or as a researcher or as a grants manager or as a policy maker. Let us do our bit and move to the next level. I would say that. That's how I look at things. <laughs> Accepting and moving on. That's the key what you said. She's... Professor Bhatnagar is saying thanks to you for this. Thank you so much. So any other uh, question? I'll just check it out in the chat box if I have uh, taken all of them. Okay, ma'am, I think, I think that's it about questions. Thank you, ma'am. In fact, uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, 20 years back or maybe 15 years back, we saw that women are not having the apex positions, etc. in India or maybe in Asia also. But now we can see that women are heading organizations. They are at, they are in policy making. They are heading the uh, universities. They are Some of them are vice chancellors. So it's very inspiring and encouraging now that women have a bright future ahead. And uh, even in this pandemic times, Women are working hard. They are managing households also. They are working also. They are producing good research articles, doing the research work also. So I'm um, grateful to you, Mike. Thank you so much for this highly, highly inspiring lecture. And I'm also thankful to the uh, audience. They were huge in number. So we had quite a tough time handling all of that. And uh, this, sorry, ma'am, there's another question by... Uh, yeah, how you learned alphabet of science, I can say. <laughs> see, it, see, the question of alphabet of science is, you know, that it is betweenness which your teachers, uh, the way they teach you, uh, they explain you a concept. It is here you learn the, the, the so-called alphabet of science. I remember somebody, uh, I was asked as a small child, I was asked, is uh, there air? I said, no. It is how she, the teacher, made me to understand, no, you can feel the air. So these are the alphabets of science. What else is the alphabets? It's not ABCD. It's the ABCD of science. Then I could realize, oh, this is how you feel the air. It has a pressure. It has weight. So these are what I think the alphabets of science. Understanding the basics, the concepts. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I hope ma'am has answered all your queries. And uh, now I would like to take this opportunity to thank the uh, forces behind this uh, WISE Women in Science Forum. So I would like to thank uh, first and foremost, Professor. There is, a, there is some question, some Soumya. I can see. I don't know. I can uh, see Soumya. Somebody was saying. I don't know. No, there's no okay, That's fine. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, so they are actually saying thank you to you. <laughs> oh, okay. thank, thank you so much. Yeah. So I would like to thank Professor Deepthi Gupta. She's the Dean alumni. Who, who is, she's actually the brain behind this uh, Women in Science Forum. She actually contacted you way back in, uh, before the pandemic time. You must right. 
when we were uh, planning to uh, hold this lecture. And uh, uh, I'm also deeply grateful to Professor Jagdeep Kaur and Professor Ashna Bhatnagar, both from Punjab University. They are also the pillars behind this WISE Forum for the immense help and guidance at each and every step. We are thankful to the alumni office also, particularly to Miss Sonia. She has been quite instrumental and is very, very helpful. And last but not the least, I'm extremely grateful to all of you, the audience who took out your precious time and that too on Saturday uh, to attend this lecture. And I hope you have benefited a lot from this. And I'm sure ma'am is there available for you whenever you want to ask anything, please do uh, email. Sure. And uh, it's been an inspiring lecture, and I thank you, ma'am, very much. And we hope to look forward. We look forward to have you here in Punjab University soon after this academic time is over. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you all of you for your patient hearing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, audience, and thank, thank you, Dr. Minakshi Mishima. Thank, thank you. Ma'am, should I end the meeting? Please?